good morning good afternoon good evening from whichever part of the world you're in welcome back to adonai's kingdom i just feel elated whenever i say the word adonai's kingdom because that kingdom is the real deal welcome back and my name is awaudi the messenger let's start with a word of prayer father we bless your holy name we thank you for your kingdom we thank you for being making us part of the kingdom part and parcel we can ask for anything and we receive we bless your holy name father lord use me as an oracle of your voice use me to pass your message to each and every person wherever they could be in their cars vans houses restaurants wherever they could be all over the world touch the mighty the holy spirit of god and holy spirit of god we welcome you we welcome you take control of this session in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen <clears throat> yes another super tuesday and we are back to the next chapter of shoftim which is which is shoftim 10 that's judges 10 and the title today is about rebellion it's like most of the things that we are learning it's about rebelling because after all human beings we've been rebelling against god god has been faithful to us and we are always rebelling so it's like we are being reminded day in day out to walk according to his laws so yeah the title is rebellion that's in judges chapter 10 let's see what the israelites did why they rebelled and what they gained out of the rebellion okay from verse 1 it says and uh, after abimelech there arose arose to save israel taller the son of poor the son of dodo a man of issachar you know issachar is a tribe where it is known that they knew the sign of times they could foresee how things were and he dwelt in Shamir, in the mountain of Ephraim. And he judged Israel 23 years, and he died, and he was buried in Shamir. So, yeah. So, Abimelech, 24, 23 years, he was a ruler. I wonder if we can have a ruler in our current world who can rule a country for 15 years, 10 years? Yes but with hardships and also it's push and pull in for 10 years but more than 10 years is so rare it's rare unless somebody somewhere is a dictator he doesn't want to let go he thinks that uh that the throne belongs to him but you know if you're in the kingdom of god you can rule for more than those years as long as Je jehovah is taking control so he judged israel for 23 years and he died and was buried in shamir i mean only death removed him from that position where god had put him not human beings removing him it was only death and after him arose jaya the gileadite and he judged israel 22 years and he had 30 sons that rode on 30 white colts, colts are donkeys, and they had 30 cities. They called them the villages of Jaya until this day, which is in the land of Gilead. And Jaya died and was buried in Carmel. So something I wanted to show you guys are donkeys in those olden times they were animals of peace not like uh, horses which are usually used for wars so you find do donkeys when they were riding the donkeys everything was peaceful 
whenever you see where people are riding donkeys in the Bible, it was always about peace. Jesus riding on the colt, the donkey. I mean, it was just peaceful. And taxes were collected. The sons were take, well taken care of. Everything was under control. That means if you walk with God, he will bless you and your family. Walking with God is like walking with that donkey where there is peace. In short, walk with the Holy Spirit and you will get the peace of the kingdom and everything, everything, not some things, everything will be under control and you will be succeeding in things. Even you yourself will be always amazed. Okay, let's go to verse 6. And the children of Israel continue to do that. You know, after those judges, the Israelites, they started rebellion as usual. The children of Israel continued to do that which displeased the Lord. And they served Baalim, the Ashtaroth, the gods of Aram, the gods of Zidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of and the children of Ammon, the gods of Phil Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and they that they did not serve. You know, that thing, it's so serious in verse 6 because the children of Israel, they continue to do that which displeased the Lord. I mean, God, okay, in a, I think it's in King James Version, it says, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of God, of the Lord. Doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Somebody put an example like, uh, uh, we can say commit, committing adult, adultery, or, okay, committing uh, adultery is bad, or idol, idolatry, idol worshipping, committing it is bad. Also, it's like adultery, if you commit it, it's more offensive before, before your spouse. Okay, adultery is bad, but before your spouse, it's even worse. So you see, these guys, this is what Israel did. They were worshipping idols, and they made it even worse. They did evil again in the sight of the Lord. I mean, there are things that are bad. And then you get that pride. You want to now to expose it you sin if you sin sin on your way by yourself but don't go and sin it sin in front of your fellow believers you make other people feel so bad that's even worse inside it's like you know god is in with them with the believers he dwells with them and then you're going to sin in front it's, it's, it's so offensive. So, and verse 7, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. God became angry, and he delivered them over into the hand of the Philistines, into the hand of the children of Ammon. You know, uh, before that, you find that uh, the Israelites, uh, in in verse back to verse six after they were worshiping idols the gods of Ammon and the gods of the philistines i mean they were worshiping gods from the other nations israel worship gods of their neighbors and it's like today Instead of you worshipping Jehovah, Adonai, Yeshua, what do you do? You worship the world. You worship the politicians. You bow before politicians so that you can get something small. Instead of bowing to the Most High God so that He can give you everything big. You want to bow to the politicians, to the leader. To the businessman so that you can get maybe something to buy 
address or anything to treat yourself instead of the looking at the long term the long term is with yeshua hamashia the long term it's not with man go for the long term so the world stop worshiping the world and if you stop believing god you'll start believing anything if you stop believing in god believing in god you'll start believing in anything that comes your way whatever people tell you somebody comes with a some theory new theory you know everyone is bright nowadays somebody can go to sleep and then when they wake up they'll tell you oh the moon is like this you should be doing this and this i've been thinking about it and you are you must think twice why should i follow him that's why i always say follow yourself follow your instincts and follow the holy spirit you'll never be ashamed or, or rather you'll never feel down okay and verse 8 let's continue and they crushed and broke the children of israel that year 18 years and all the children of israel that were beyond the jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. that is uh, the philippines the Phili philistians philippines oh my goodness filipino i wonder if you're there okay uh big up to jose in philippines the philistine the philistines into the hand of the Ammon. so the amorites amorites all of them they conquered mm, israel and the children of Ammon crossed over the jordan to fight also against the against judah and against benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, and the Israel was greatly distressed. They were distressed because they forgot their first love because of their idolatry. Now they are distressed. They don't know what to do. And the children of Israel cried to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, and we have forsaken our God, and have served the Baalim. Baalim. And the Lord said to the children of Israel, Did I not save you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites? from the children of Ammon and the, from the Philistines, the Zidonians, Amalek, and Moan oppressed you, and you cried to me, and I saved you from their land. And you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will continue, I will not continue to save you. God has, has been giving us them chances, chances, but they are not ready to change. Therefore, I will not continue to save you. Go and cry to the gods which you have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. That's a good lesson in verse 14. When you decide not to follow God, when earthquakes, tremors, floods, recessions, I mean plagues, heaters, there is no need of crying unto God. Just go cry to the gods, the people you've been worshipping, the ones you have chosen more than Jesus. Let them save you in the time of your distress. That's when you'll re realize that Jesus is Lord. Yeshua is Lord. This, these things are in the Bible. We are being told every day, trust in me. Trust in Jehovah. God says, put all your trust in me. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But when things go okay, we put him aside, decide to trust in our wealth. And then when things go bad, we go back to him. And he is warning us in verse 14, go and cry to the gods which you have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. And the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do, do to us whatever pleases you. Only de deliver us now, this day. That's how desperate they, are. they were. They were ready for any punishment. And then they wanted to be delivered. And they removed the strange gods from among them. And they served the Lord. And his soul was grieved by the toil of Israel. Our God is a forgiving God indeed. And the children of Ammon were gathered and they encamped in, the, in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled and encamped in Mizpah. 
and the people and the princess of Gilead said each to his friend, Whosoever shall be the man who will begin to fight against the children of Ammon, he shall be the head over there, over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Very interesting. If you cry unto the Lord, seek forgiveness with a pure heart. Jehovah will bear your misery no longer. But you have to forgive one another first. Everything in God's kingdom, you have to forgive one, one another first and before you go and seek forgiveness from the Most High God. The worst of, of serving God is better than, I like that saying, the worst of serving God is better, is better than serving idols. It's better than the best in serving idols. The worst of serving God, even if you are serving God once in a day, it's better than the best in serving idols. You know, there are people who serve idols. They they believe in the idols. You find them, they're believing in idols from a morning at 10, they're serving idols. Noon time, in the afternoon at 3, they're serving idols. Before they go, they, they eat, they're serving idols. Before they go to sleep, they're serving idols. But it said the worst of serving God, you serve God once in a day, you are much stronger. You are better than the best of serving those idols. Think about it. Meditate about that one. And uh, as we continue, some helping points here in Proverbs. Pro Proverbs 28 and verse 13. We are being told, He who co conceals his sins does not prosper. That's why you have to seek forgiveness of your sins. But whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Don't be afraid to go before Jehovah. Never ever be afraid to go before the Most High God seeking forgiveness. He is always there for you. In Joel 2, Joel 2.13, Joel tells us, Rent your heart and not your garments. You know, people, there are some people who rip their clothes because they think that God is really eh, listening to them. But we are being told, rent, it's like rip your heart. Cry with your heart. Not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. So cry with your heart, with, a, with honesty, and the Lord will be there for you. If we look at Isaiah 55, the book of Isaiah 55 and verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. To our God, he will freely pardon. The wicked has to forsake his ways. If you are wicked, you have to forsake your ways in order to be pardoned and mercy to be applied in your life. And then if we look at uh, Micah, Micah chapter 7 and verse 18, verse 18, who is a God like you, O Father? Who pardons sin and forgive, forgives the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show your mercy. Oh, my birds, those birds today, they've decided to deal with me. Our God is a merciful God. Okay, and then we go to Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14 tells us, If you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So, yeah, it's all about forgiveness. When you, you first, if you're seeking God, anything you're seeking in God, first you have to forgive those who have sinned against you or you've sinned against them. Seek forgiveness and your ways will be okay. And if we look at uh, what Dr. Luke says, Luke chapter 6 and verse 37, 37, do not judge or you, you will not be, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. So don't try to push God to the world asking him to help you, help you. And already on your side, it's so untidy. Cleanse your side completely. Uh, there was this verse 13. In verse 13, when I, if I go back to verse, verse 13 and 14 of uh, Judges 10, God had said, You have forsaken me and served other gods, therefore I will deliver you no more. Go, and then we said in verse 14, God said, Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulations. You see, here God wants us to focus on Him. God wants us to focus on Him on a serious note. Forget about other, other things. In, if you look at uh, Luke chapter 9 and verse 62, Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand on a plow and looks back is fit for the service of the kingdom. You are plowing, you in the field. Or rather, you, you've decided, I'm following Jesus, I'm doing these things for the kingdom, doing, doing this. And then all of a sudden, you're half food. You turn, you look back at your old life. You're, you're checking eh, the side side mirror. You're checking where you've been. It's like you are lukewarm. You are neither hot or cold. You are just there. You are on the fence. You don't know where, whether you are on God's side or on the devil's side. That one, Jesus said. Jesus said, "You are not fit for the kingdom." So you, we have, we all have to focus unto the Almighty God in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. If you are there, you don't know anything about Christ. You just keep hearing about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Adonai. And you, you want to be part and parcel of it. Just say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you as a sinner. I've sinned against you and against everyone. I seek forgiveness and I forgive everyone who has sinned, wronged me. And I ask for forgiveness for, from everyone I've wronged to. God, I want to be part and parcel of the kingdom, your kingdom, Adonai's kingdom. I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins and he died for three days and on the third day he rose again and he's seated, he seated on your right hand side. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you say that prayer, you know, the kingdom, everyone is celebrating. Heaven is celebrating. The angels are celebra celebrating. I am celebrating with you. But you've done a major part. Do you know what? It's easy to take... Somebody said it's easy to take over a city than taking over a soul. You can take over London, you can take, take over the city of New York. You see the Chinese are taking over cities, countries. It's easy. But taking over a soul, it's hard. That's why you hear when one hell is depopulated, the angels celebrate. Heaven celebrate. God is happy because you are saved. Your future will be will never be the same again. So just stick 
to the word of God. And Father Lord, I pray for my viewers, each and every one of them. Open their doors. Let them learn how to forgive others and seek forgiveness. Bless each and every one of them. In Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. So guys, God bless you. See you next time. And the Holy One of Israel shine his countenance upon you. Shalom and peace. Amen and amen.